Hi everyone, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Today, we're gonna get ready for our first open garden. We mentioned that we were going to be participating in a garden tour. And while Eric gets started on mowing the lawn, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it. We were asked by a local ambassador for the Garden Conservancy to participate in their open days program. There are a few hundred gardens across the country that open to the public on various dates. It will be our first time welcoming so many people into our garden and we are very, very excited. We are gonna spend the rest of our day making sure we are ready to go for next Sunday. Surprise! We started making our chore list and realized we had a few holes in the garden. And even though we promised ourselves we wouldn't get too carried away with the garden tour coming up, we decided to pop over to the garden center and pick up a few annuals to add some color to a few little spots. It is late in the season, so not everything is looking so good in nursery containers right now, but we just have a few places we wanna add some color. Aha, they still have some of the apple brandy coleus, which we've been using to fill in a few places. It gives us the chartreuse, it gives us the burgundy kind of maroon color, and they grow really fast, so they're gonna be perfect to tuck in. I think that was a big success. We grabbed some apple brandy coleus. We grabbed a few impatience, that was. Mm -hmm. Compact purple. I'll take a look at the tag and let you guys know what I think it they're was. sun patients. Sun patients. Which we've never grown before. So we'll give them a try, see how they go. But what's very amazing is as we get closer to the season ending, getting into the autumn, upstate New York is known for many things, but we are really known for cider donuts. These are warm. They just came out of their oven at George's Nursery. So we're now fueling up to go home and start our day of garden chores. So this spot in the garden, we purchased some annuals from our local garden center on sale for $2. And the reason we wanted to fill the spot in is because we have two little quinces that were sent on to us as one gallons from uh, Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. They have been eaten, it looks like, by some rabbits, but to just kind of fill this spot in, give it some color, we picked up some annuals, I'm gonna put them in the ground. We're out of biotone for the season, so what we do have is some Dr. Jim's tomato secret. I figured it's better than nothing. So we're just gonna throw it in the ground, give this little area a pop of color, and see how it looks. So these right here are the Vanessa Bell Rose by David Austin Roses. And they look great. I'm just being super particular because of the garden show next week. So normally I would leave some of these things, but I'm just going to go in and clean up this little faded bloom right here. It's kind of all by itself. Normally I'd look for a group of five leaves. But these I'm just going to go through and deadhead. There's one that's turning into a little hip down here. If these sprays of blooms were all done, what I would do. Let me go get this spray right here. Is I would go down to this set of, oops, that's not five. This set of five, that's not five either. As long as it's over five. Yeah, it's okay. I would find that and I would cut here. And then that would be a new growth point for the rose. So I'm going to go through and deadhead this rose. Ready? So if we look right here on Mary Rose, another David Austin rose, we can see there's been a little bit of deer damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the next group of at least five leaves, one, two, three, four, five, and cut right above it. Just to neaten up the appearance a little bit. And then I know it's hard to sacrifice these blooms, but you know, we're, I don't know how much time we'll have between next week and today. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these off because I know they're going to be faded. And that's that. Would you like to smell them, Christopher? Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, they do smell amazing. What we're going to do here is prune off some of the wee white blooms. They've gotten very thick, but also some of them, because we've had constant rain and then dry and constant rain, some of the blooms have gotten uh, burned and they're faded. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to find the first set of two leaves. And I don't know if you can see that right there, but there's one leaf two leaf and we're going to cut right above them and this will send out this is a re-blooming hydrangea so this will send out new blooms probably not in time for the garden show next week 
But in the meantime, we'll just clean up some of these burnt balloons. A great gardener that we know once told us that as long as you've pulled your weeds and your garden edges look good, everyone will think the space looks fantastic. So here you can see the first step of my four step edging process with the half moon edger. Next I go through with a loop hoe. It has a blade on both sides of the loop and I hold it on a diagonal so I can get those grass roots and any other weeds that are pushed up against the edge. Next, I go through with a battery powered edger. This is kind of like a vertical weed whacker. You could use a weed whacker, I guess, but this one has a metal blade on it, so it helps get a really clean line. And then I finish up the job with this Fiskar shrub rake. It's become my best friend in the garden. It doesn't pull up your compost or mulch. It just pulls away some of those grass clippings and weeds. It makes the cleanest looking line not too shabby. I think these came out well, or at least this portion. I will now re recreate the same effect everywhere. So that should look fantastic for next weekend. And then in between, I'll just come out with the electric edger and the shrub rake. I would say maybe once a month. I do the whole process but this is a newer garden too. So I'm really happy with how it's shaping up. So the broccoli has come and gone. So what we have to do now to prepare is, you know, remove the broccoli. And I've already gone ahead and harvested the cabbage. You can see I've left the stump behind. Um, and I'm just gonna cut down here at the base. Broccoli is so strong. Um, I'm so amazed at how strong these are. It's like a two-handed approach. And because we have this garden show next week, we ran down to our local garden center. Well, actually, they're actually a local grower. They grow a ton of Proven Winners annuals. And we purchased for a dollar these geraniums. And so just to like fill a little space and add a little color for next weekend, we're going to go ahead and lay these out. The first variety we have right here is Calliope Medium Crimson Flame. And then we got a second variety called Americana Pink Mounted Zonal Geranium. If anyone knows where we can find seeds for these, let us know in the comments because I'm really liking geraniums and I'd like to grow some from seed next year. So here we are all planted in. We ended up with two extras. So I popped out a suffering strawberry uh, and popped an extra in there. And then I popped in an extra here where we had a nasturtium that was kind of overgrowing the space right there. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna water them in. We'll give them some fertilizer later and they should be all set. So also in preparation for our garden tour next Sunday, one of our chores is to clean the fountain. And if you look in here, you're going to see there's a little bit of algae growing. Uh, there are some dead bugs, you know, the kind of thing that we have to do to get rid of and clean up so it looks pretty. What I'm going to use is a scrub brush. I'm going to use a decorative fountain algae control, an old sponge that I'm not going to reuse in the kitchen, my hose on jet, and the leaf blower. So first things first is I'm going to make sure my fountain is off. I'm going to get out my leaf blower and I'm going to use the leaf blower to blow the water out of the fountain. I know it sounds crazy, but it really works. Okay. So the next step is we're going to take a look in here. The the grossest part. So I'm gonna disassemble the fountain and inspect the pump to make sure that there's no big gobs of goo or anything icky in there, rinse it out if I have to. And once I figure that all out, I'll thread the pump back together and scrub the fountain down, get all the pieces of algae off, 
uh, big chunks, give it a rinse with some water, use the sponge, blow that dirty water out. And so the next part is we're going to add in this decorative fountain algae control. And it is the teeniest, tiniest drop. The directions say um, two to four fluid ounces per 1,000 gallons of water, or half to a fluid ounce for 250 gallons of water. Uh, this is like a five to 10 gallon fountain. So I'm just going to do a drip. Got it. And that's all we need. So now the fountain turned on. We can see that it's a little bit off balance. So what we have are these little plastic shims that we can slide between the pieces to get the fountain flowing correctly. I mean, that looks pretty good right off the bat. A little bit more to the back. To the back? Okay. Oh, that's a lot bit. That was a lot bit? That was a lot bit. Yeah. Does it look right? I think you did it. I think we did it. Oh, man. The hardest part of that entire process was placing the shims to make sure that everything was level. But the actual cleaning part takes about 10 minutes. So just when we thought we were done with our chores for the day, the edges look good, we've done our weeding, we've done deadheading, we got in the car and headed to a different garden center. So that makes three for the day, and this time we came back with hydrangeas. Who could blame us for coming home with these three tough stuff hydrangeas? The blooms are purple right now. We'll be adding acidifier to at least maintain purple, if not get a little bit bluer. These are supposed to be two to three feet tall and wide, but we have seen in some other gardens that these can get quite a bit bigger than that. We are so excited to get these in the ground, and that should be the last project for the day. So what Christopher and I are doing this afternoon is we are going to replace these salvia with these tough stuff hydrangeas and the main reason we're doing that is because these salvias bloom so early and even if we cut them back uh they don't really produce a second flush and so we're just gonna take them out i mean we were in uh, michigan a couple of weeks ago and we saw these beautiful tough stuff hydrangea hedges and they were so inspiring and I feel like at this rate, summer 2023 is summer of hydrangeas, and anywhere we can put a hydrangea in, we're going to do it. So we're going to pull out these uh, salvias and replace them with three beautiful Tough Stuff hydrangeas. So as Christopher starts to do the auger, I can tell you a little bit while we pick this spot. As you can see, it is shaded in the hot afternoon sun. <laughs> Got to be careful of birch roots. <laughs> yep, careful of birch roots. Get a good stance. There is a birch tree right there. All right, so to get these planted, we're going to be pretty generous with biotone. This has the mycorrhizal fungi in it that help put little tiny holes into the roots of the hydrangea so they get extra water. Three gallon sized. Wow. Good looking roots. Very wet. I'm gonna get some of this junky junk off the top so it has some breathing. We don't want that crown to be buried and wet. They tend to put this on top just to hold moisture in the cans no longer, but the other thing I like to do before I put things in the ground is cut that tag off, which I already did. All right, what do we think? The front here? Front for that purple space. Let me do it this way in the ground I feel like that's really good so right now i'm just watering them in it's pretty wet back here right now so i'm not going to water them too much but i definitely want to settle anything that's loose or you know just help them get going in life and then because we've had a little bit of deer pressure lately i'm going to spray some of this 
liquid fence deer and rabbit repellent on them just to help. It's not foolproof. We used it before and the next day we had some stuff eaten, but prepare for the stench, Christopher. It smells so disgusting when I tell you. I can't. It smells like um like a porta potty at a music festival on a really hot day that's been out there for about seven months. Why? Like, I don't want that on me. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I don't. I think we can spray it anywhere. I, I think that's enough, probably. Yeah. Oh. Well, that was a busy day. We ended up planting three new Tough Stuff Hydrangeas, cleaning out the veggie bed, cleaning out the fountain, mowing the lawn. We did some edge work, we did some weeding, and we're very happy that you came along with us for the journey. <laughs> Again, I'm Eric. And I'm Christopher. And we're Grow For Me 5B. Thanks for growing with us. <laughs>